So where are we today? In, in my view, we've entered this third generation of IP market development, and we're really in the first half of the third act. And what we see happening are five significant events. Um, but they all have one thing in common. We refer to this as the age of the golden rule, meaning those with the gold are starting to rule. And those with the gold are the investment banks, Wall Street, privateers, and others who are investing in intellectual property. So how are they doing it? First type of transaction that we're seeing more frequently is a going private transaction. And that's because being a public company that's so focused on managing intellectual property licensing programs is a difficult business. It's a difficult business because investors still struggle to understand the predictability of those cash flows. Um, and as you all know in the room, those cash flows can be put at great risk through arcane things like Markman hearings or summary judgment or trials, things that you understand well but that Wall Street isn't quite so sure of. And as a result, there's a view that many of these public licensing firms, like Mosaid, are generally undervalued as a public company. And so what we're seeing happen in the marketplace today in this age of golden rule is that investors are coming in and taking these firms private. An example transaction is one that Ocean Tomo completed a few months ago where we raised just over $600 million to take Mosaid from a public company to a private company so that it could better manage its intellectual property program. On the private side, though, we can see the expected opposite result, which is that private companies that own intellectual property are generally higher valued than companies without IP. Um, this chart shows you a series of studies uh, published by the University of Chicago, and I won't belabor the detail, but the conclusions are that if you are a venture-backed or a private equity-backed firm, if you have intellectual property as compared to your peer group, you are more likely to get a higher valuation, you are more likely to get second rounds of funding, and you are more likely to go public, less likely to go bankrupt. All good things in the views of a venture capitalist or private equity investor. And what we've begun to see as a result of this trend that public companies tend to be undervalued, private companies are getting a fair return, is that these shareholders are becoming very active. They're not happy with the fact that this highly valued IP that they see in their private world is not getting the respect it deserves in the public marketplace. And so one of the most noted examples of late was Motorola Mobility. Now, most people in this room are certainly familiar with that transaction, but I suspect you're all not familiar with what we believe to be the real catalyst of how that trade began to occur. And it began to occur in our view with Carl Icahn. Carl Icahn, who's a famous activist, comes to the board and says, you guys are not managing the patents of this business for appropriate value. And as you can see from the chart on the screen, uh, lo and behold, in a short period of time, the share price increases significantly. Well, some of you may protest and say, come on, Jeff, really, that was Carl Icahn? I don't know, turn only to AOL. In AOL, the case is clear. You had an activist investor star board who sent a letter to the board of directors, and they say in their letter, AOL's patent portfolio is beachfront property, it's extremely valuable, and they go on to say you're not managing it. We did research and found in looking at the history of AOL's equity and the public comments made by their chief executive that prior to being notified by Starbird, there was never been a single public reference to the patent portfolio of AOL by its chairman. So the result was a trade and a significant increase in shareholder value. When you see a couple of these trades as a Wall Street person, it becomes quite clear that maybe we should just begin to trade these stocks generally. Because isn't it interesting when a Carl Icahn or an activist knocks on your door, proclaims to the world that you're doing a terrible job in your IP management, the market anticipates that the board will respond, and usually they do at least by voice, the stock jumps significantly in anticipation of that reaction, and then the investor sells out on the, on the anticipation. Nothing really happened to the IP, but for an IP event trader, they made a significant profit. And so these issues we're starting to see more of, and why they're significant to everyone in this room, is as investors begin to focus on intellectual property as a driver of share value, the analysts begin to report on it, and the analysts begin to question the officers and directors. 
I don't know if you're familiar, I'm sure everybody's familiar with Interdigital. We sent um, a member of our investment team to the Interdigital uh, shareholder meeting that was held in Pennsylvania a month or so ago. And when the shareholders got a chance to ask questions, the first person stood up the room, and I, I'll probably get the quote slightly wrong, but trust me, this is pretty much the question. It was, as a shareholder, I look at your patent portfolio, and you've got a Ferrari in the garage, and you don't even have a learner's permit. So that was the beginning of the shareholder discussion. And I think that's an indication of the opportunity and the changing transitions in the marketplace.